दिल्ली वालों गजब कर दिया आप लोगों ने दिल्ली के लोगों ने आज देश में एक नई किस्म की राजनीति को जन्म दिया है जिसका नाम है काम की राजनीति देश में पहली बार किसी चुनाव में शिक्षा पर हुए काम की जीत हुई है ये शिक्षा की जीत पार्टी की गंदी नकारात्मक राजनीति पर सच्चाई ईमानदारी और सच्ची देशभक्ति की जीत है दैट इज वॉट द पीपल ऑफ डेली वोट फॉर आई लव यू Actually, one of the worst uh, analyses of this result was when Vasu said, "Aam Aadmi Party Jharu sweeps Delhi." <laughs> like, I mean, there should be a certain bar in, bar in the level. Obvious jokes. <laughs> Swachh Bharat. Swachh Bharat. Right. Well, I guess Delhi, being the capital, elections are normally considered to carry much more impact than the size that Delhi warrants. In fact analysts say that these Delhi elections perhaps could change the future course of politics in India. After perhaps the most vitriolic and hate-filled and violent campaign everybody was really waiting in anticipation some hoping one way some hoping the other way. But first consider the counterfactual. If hate and abuse and violent speeches worked and the BJP swept in Delhi experts feared that this election could set a future course and all other elections could be riddled with hate and violence speeches perhaps from all parties if that works in india you know in politics whatever works man in the end the bjp lost that's the factual and lost badly the aap won a huge landslide the jharu swept now <laughs> now with this failure will the bjp rethink its strategy in the future state elections six more states are going to the poll in the next year or 14 months has delhi been a turning point is it that important is there pressure on the bjp to rethink and perhaps water down any hate filled campaign by some of its uh, candidates um, will they be controlled and checked this is the one of the issues among many will be discussing uh the signal that delhi has given for the future of indian politics but first let's have a little quick summary and some findings very quick analysis of what happened in these elections first of all just the simple uh, results let's have a look at the uh, <coughs> results of these elections what do they show they show that of the 70 seats by the way one seat there is still not a result so this is 62 out of 69 and the and in the results 7 out of uh the remaining seats are the bjp one seat is there is still lead and the bjp is leading by a narrow margin of about 800 plus votes so probably will win that so consider 62 uh, to 8 but what about the votes now here's where the bjp is feeling pretty good about what happened at least given that you get 8 out of 70 uh it's a, a dismal performance but look at this vote the aam aadmi party 54% that is an absolute landslide by any standard but the bjp 40% much better than is done earlier in assembly election not general elections of course down 15% from general elections but 40% is good for the bjp in assembly elections congress a dismal 4% what about the swing compared to last assembly election aam aadmi party a small swing away just under 1% in fact bjp up 8% and congress down 5%. Now where did that BJP 8% come from? Just let's have a look at kind of some break up of where the BJP how its votes went up and it mainly came from a decline in the Congress vote. Just look at this. 
we look at the Congress votes, Congress voters appear to have switched to the BJP. The BJP gained votes mostly from the drop in the Congress vote. Seats with the highest, if you look at the top, top 35 seats, swing to BJP 11, 7 out of that 11 came from a drop in the Congress. And the rest is even more surprising. If you look at the bottom half, the swing to the BJP was plus 3%. If we can just show that figure. And all three <laughs> came from the Congress. Now, the rest, we look at it now region-wise, and that's even more significant. If we look at, uh, first, let's look at East Delhi. The swing to the BJP in East Delhi is plus 7%, and the swing away from the Congress, minus 7%. Of course, there are complexities. It could go here, there, and everywhere, but these figures are stark and simple, and it's a, a shock. Central Delhi, plus 6 to the BJP, swing away from the Congress, is minus 4. So, bulk of the BJP swing came uh, from the Congress decline. In Outer Delhi, it's a little different. That's where the BJP did the best. And other, it got its votes from all the parties. Look at the way, swing from the Congress, minus 5. Uh, 3 from Ahmad B party and 3 from others. So, this is switch from the Congress to the BJP is slightly reminiscent and uh, could be an indicator of something that could happen even in Bengal coming up because look what happened last time in Bengal in the Lok Sabha elections. <coughs> CPM voters switched to the BJP. The swing to the BJP in Bengal uh, 2019, Lok Sabha was 24% in Bengal. That's just huge. And look at the swing away from the CPM, 22% away. So the bulk of CPM voters in Bengal seem to have switched. So, in, in, in many uh, ways, Vasu and uh, Dora, the, the, the third party seems to just fall out and they go to... One of the dominant parties. Right, one of the dominant parties. And the here, Congress mainly the BJP. What was the Congress drop went to Trinamool. Yeah. So, this, both these parties collapsed. Yeah. So, so, it appears, you know, there's only a, one space for a national party. Congress. No, what is happening actually uh, is that voters in India, very interestingly, seem to now want a two-party system. The third party drops out and all their votes go to one of the other two. So that's what I'm state. saying. At the national level, there's only one national party right now. You know something? You're living in the past like uh, some uh, some other parties. I think I'm, there are no I'm national level anymore. There are state elections no, now. No, no, I'll come to Federal. that. Federal. Yeah. No, okay. I'll come I'll, to that. We'll so two parties a, in each state. We'll yeah, come yeah. to that analysis that, that, in just that, a second. That, but we we're need just to getting go. into analysis. We're just yeah. getting into analysis. Fascinating but we can do analysis, some analysis yeah. with one of the big <laughs> winners of today, which is Raghav Chadha, is joining us, Aam Aadmi Party. Sorry, Raghav, for keeping you waiting. Congratulations, uh, by the way. On your win. Many congratulations. Many yeah, congratulations. On, on the Aam Aadmi Party win. Look, uh, you know, now that you won, give us a sense of how tough this was. Was this just like one of the toughest battles you faced? Well, <clears throat> all I can say is that uh, it uh, was an election that we wanted to fight on issues that matter in the day-to-day -day lives of the people of Delhi. If you could kindly get the echo corrected, please. Yeah, this was just, an election in which a lot of attempts were made to uh, you know, change the narrative, to digress from the real issues, to drift, uh, the, you know, uh, drift us away from, from the, the path that we were uh, sort of marching on. Uh, a, a lot of attempts were made by our political adversaries. Yet, we, uh, we stood our ground, we went to the people, we sought votes only and only on the basis of the work that we've done in the last five years and on the basis of a blueprint, a vision uh, that we have for Delhi for the next five years. And people appreciated that. People wanted to hear that. And people rejected the politics of negativity, propaganda, animosity, enmity, uh, and perhaps vulgarity that the Bharati Janata Party pursued. And they gave a thumping majority to Mr. Kejriwal, appreciated. Uh, the work that has been done by him and gave a vote to uh, the, uh, Mr. Kejriwal for the next five years. I think uh, we did not get distracted, we did not get swayed away, we did not digress from the real issues and that in some sense was a challenge and I think we have overcome that challenge. Tell me Raghav, uh, 
was it ever, did you ever feel maybe this hateful campaign may be working? Have you ever seen any election anywhere with more violent speeches and hateful speeches? Well, Dr. Roy, my experience in politics is only of seven years since ever okay. since the Ahmadmi Party was born. Your experience of covering politics and electoral politics seventy years is, is is decades and decades old. So you seventy At years. Least? So you you no. perhaps you perhaps you perhaps should answer this question. But I, in my limited political experience of the last seven eight years, or of have been working closely with uh, Mr. Kejriwal, I have personally never seen any election Rahul. which is so hate filled which is full of, uh, uh, you know, mudslinging, abusing, uh, to a point where a democratically elected chief minister with perhaps the single biggest uh, mandate in India's electoral history was being called uh, uh, an Atankwadi, a terrorist. Uh, in the last election, BJP called Mr. Kejriwal a Naxalite. This election, the BJP called him a terrorist. And I think people of Delhi have given a, a, the BJP a befitting reply. And they've, they've made sure that the BJP understands that Mr. Kejriwal is their own beta. He's the Shravan Kumar of Delhi. He's the ghar ka bada beta. He's not an Atankwadi. He's not a terrorist. And, and, and I think to that extent, yes, the politics uh, uh, that we've seen over the last few weeks in Delhi has been uh, very, very uh, disappointing. Uh, and it, it has further lowered the bar as far as electoral politics and electoral well, Just a second. You're saying lowered the I bar. But in the same breath certainly say... Uh, just a second, Raghav. Well, I would, I would it, certainly uh, say that... The bar was lowered, but the people rejected that. And does that mean that yes. everybody will think many times uh, before going into such hateful campaigns again? Will it be a change in the future? Is it that important, this election? Well, I, 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 I hope and pray that it is. I hope and pray that it oh. does, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Bharati Janta Party does understand that, uh, you know, politics of negativity, propaganda, mudslinging, abuses, so on and so forth, and attempts to polarize, openly polarize the electorate are, certain, are things that people will reject because people want answers on, uh, you know, the matters and issues that uh, bother in, in the lives of people on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you were to look at the campaigns, and it, I, I'm not speaking simply on the basis of the results that you've seen uh, in Delhi. If you were to look at the campaign that the Bharati Janta Party ran in Maharashtra or in Jharkhand or in Haryana, you would see that they, they wanted to polarize the electorate. They wanted to, you know, uh, amplify this election, uh, bring in national issues, so on and so forth. And people wanted to vote decisively on the issues uh, of unemployment, education, healthcare, water, electricity, education, so on and so forth. And I think the people of Delhi have also done the exact same thing. They have given a resounding mandate, uh, a thumping majority to Mr. Kejriwal uh, and uh, give, a th uh, give a thumbs up to his performance of the last right. five years. So, uh, Raghav, uh, now just looking ahead, are we talking to, and I don't know why this so many people want an answer to this question. Are we talking to the future finance minister of Delhi? If they twist your arm, will you become finance minister? Okay. Reluctantly. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, no, well, well, quite frankly, I think these questions are irrelevant, yeah. hypothetical in nature. What matters is that Mr. Kejriwal has won today. What matters is that Mr. Kejriwal has got another mandate. For the third time, he'll be becoming the chief minister. And all of us, all workers, volunteers of Aam Aadmi Party, who, as foot soldiers of Aam Aadmi Party, will be behind him, giving him all the support that he but needs. But Mamta Banerjee uh, has reached out to you and concern. said, let's fight the West Bengal elections together. Will you be fighting it with her? <laughs> these are hypothetical questions. <laughs> She's I asked you today. I don't wish to uh, get into these, these hypothetical No, no, I don't, I don't have answers to these questions. I don't have any knowledge of that proposition in the first place. I think the people of Delhi have given us a mandate. We are concentrating only on Delhi. We've got a mandate to serve the people of Delhi. All our energies, focus, resources, everything is going to be channelized to serve the people of Delhi. Okay. Raghav Chadda. And we've got Pavan Thanks. Verma here. Also. Thanks, Thanks very, very much, much for joining us. All the best. Congratulations. Pavan Verma, you've got an election coming up. I don't know if it's you I can to say anymore. <laughs> well, you know, Pranav, I'm no longer in the JDU. Yes, yes, yes. But and still... I haven't joined any other political party, but I'm in political space. But I think you would concede more objectively. <laughs> without a, without a partisan line, but was how any impact pursue. is this going to have on Bihar and the elections coming up? Yeah, I think that's something we all need to think about. My view is that this 
dichotomy I was saying earlier to Vasu that we always draw from a local state election between a national election and the issues therein and a state election. Right. I think somewhere that is true, as Delhi has shown, and somewhere it's not also. Because many issues coalesce, especially when it's the capital of the country, where there are people from all parts of India, and the might of the BJP at its highest level was pitted against Mr. Kejriwal. So in a sense, it becomes more than a local election. And my takeaways from this, and I'll say this briefly to you, is that even though Raghav was insisting it focuses Delhi, and BJP remains a formidable national electoral machine, there are three important takeaways from this election. I think people now, in expectations from elections, they are looking for more governance-centric parties, which can give a verifiable record of governance. Just one I, second. Before yeah. your other two points, we've just, uh, Mr. Abhishek Singh, we've just come back. We'll come to that. We'll absorb that and come back to it. Yes, Abhishek Singh, we thank you very much indeed uh, for uh, joining us. Abhishek Singh, we, uh, you know, where does one start? You know, <laughs> one more election, Congress uh, completely wiped out in Delhi. Was it tactically, did you make a strategic error in the, you were kind of hinting at it earlier today. Looking back with zero seats, would it have been better to add even your uh, small percentage of votes to an ally? Or any, any thoughts first about that all, it, strategy? Uh, first of all, it's very sad. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Congress, simply put, needs to find a young leader in Delhi. Homegrown Delhi. Neither the senior leadership of Delhi nor the middle leadership of Delhi will work, especially in the absence of Sheila Dixit. We need to find that person, and I have some names in mind which I can't talk about. Give and us, give us, let's have a headline. Us, please give us to the hilt. one name. Till, till, no, 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 that's not my job here, but at this moment, years, back him completely. Give us the initials. Yeah, back him, no, this is serious because, because, uh, I mean, a lot of good work has been done in Delhi by Congress governments. They have to be revitalized, reminded, reinvented, represented, repackaged. And I think you just need a dynamic person. Forget about the past. Put your nose to the ground and do it. Otherwise, it's very sad. I have no words to defend or to justify. All I can say is that there is always, you know, kabhi khushi, kabhi gum. There is some amount of khushi at the fact that Congress may have lost, but the country has gained in many ways. It's good for the country, not so good for the Congress. But did you do your best to put your party ahead of the country in the sense that if you had <coughs> tried for an alliance, you, you, you would have done better for yourself and better I, for the country in your opinion? I, I told you two things in the morning, Prana, and I've been reasonably frank. I think I understand fully the Congress party's dilemma that Carter's to the extent they've been vitalized and are fighting up on the ground of the BJP, can't simply be told that they're allying with the AAP. Uh, so that's not easy in an actual live situation. Personally, I had told you, stepping out of line, not the view of the party, that possibly knowing that we would not do any great thing, we might have considered some kind of strategic or coordinated alliance for, say, 10, 20, 30 seats. As it turns out, there is some evidence for example, in Gandhinagar constituency, one or two other areas, that the Congress, wherever the Congress has done well, the BJP has inversely uh, uh, well. done well. Uh, and therefore, uh, that, that correlation, you know, could have been avoided to an extent. But that's my purely personal view. <coughs> I'm very happy that uh, the worst kind of polarization which I have seen in my life as a resident of Delhi for decades, Hindus have come out and defeated it. That's the real takeaway. Mm. Okay. The Very maximum carpet bombing of money, line, which is something actually. missed out, huge carpet bombing of money by the BJP. It was a prestige fight for them. And just add up the utterances of people like a Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh, the Home Minister of India, Mr. Pravesh Sharma doesn't matter that much, and a sitting MOS Finance. I don't see them today. I don't see them owning up, having the 56-inch chest and the true 56-inch claimed chest 
is hiding behind the home minister okay right strong well, st strong, words, uh, strong yeah. words that you even are a bit critical of your own party strategy but that's your personal view and uh, one appreciates your making that uh, known to all of us but you won't give us names that's just so unfair <laughs> 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 but thank you very much for Stuck joining out us. my neck thank enough <laughs> okay thank you Thank, Thank you. you. Can, I, can I ask? Sorry, yes, yes. Pavan, a question. Pavan, you know Nitish Kumar better than any of us. You work closely with him for a long time. Uh, think like him. What lessons is he taking away from this election? Right. Because he now is with BJP in Bihar. Is this going to persuade him to ask for more? If it's, if it, is it going to persuade him to look for options? I think that question needs to be preceded by another more important one. Is the BJP sure Mr. Nitish Kumar is with them? <laughs> so let that be resolved first before we move to the next question of what Mr. Nitish Kumar no, no, expects I'm from asking, the BJP. Is, is there Mr. doubt? But, is Mr. But, Nitish Kumar sure he is with BJP? I think at the moment he is sure because Mr. Amit Shah has said that he will be the face of the campaign. And he sees the BJP as the principal instrumentality to become Chief Minister of Bihar again. But there are takeaways for Mr. Nitish Kumar and the BJP from this local Delhi election. And I was just mentioning them, I'll take yeah, a minute yeah. more. See, first and foremost, in terms of electoral efficacy, people want more governance-centric campaigns. Secondly, I think people want to shun extremist ideologies, either of the ultra-right or the ultra-left. There is a centrist position that Mr. Kejriwal deliberately fashioned for himself, which I think has a better resonance with people. And thirdly, I think people genuinely, now this is not sloganering, look for more inclusive governance. They are saying no to organized polarization, violence, abuse, hate, divisiveness, disharmony, endemic instability. That, that <coughs> whole thing is not something which people of India want constantly. So I just want to end by saying that I think the Delhi elections, even mm. though it's a local elections, is the beginning of a far more <coughs> serious national challenge to the Amit Shah, Narendra Modi model of governance. Even though it's formidable now, but it's the beginning of a challenge and I think it's conveyed a lesson to all states and to all people of India right. that in spite right. of everything they put into this campaign, they are not invincible. He's can saying, I, can I sorry, go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. I, I think this is a, a slightly uh, stretched evaluation <laughs> because I think that, you know, as you showed in your graphics, the BJP vote share has only gone up. And it's gone up across Delhi. I also think that Amit Shah's statement that, you know, get 50% of the Hindu vote and that's all you need to do, uh, it co will continue to be the modus operandi of Shah Modi because it's going to deliver elections for them if they, have, if they have a face. I think the problem that they didn't have, it, the, that they had in Delhi, they didn't have a face. You need polarization plus. So if you have polarization plus face, I think, you know, they're so going to think, think they that will say, oh, there's lack of face. It's not just a strategy I, was I wrong. Think hate doesn't work. I don't think they're going to say hate doesn't work because That's very I, I think that uh, the vote share has only gone up. <coughs> And in the general that's elections, thanks to the Congress. Yeah, I mean, it's, and it's, in the general elections, I don't know. Did you do too much? Did you do too much? Did you do too much? No, no, no. But sir, the general elections were held today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let me answer, Pawan Verma. If Delhi is a beginning, what was Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan, and MP? And after that, Lok Sabha elections happened, and the same duo delivered. That's so, what I wanted to ask you. So that, that, that he's talking about has a national too long a beginning. But is there anything such as a? Na I mean, now we are seeing two totally different elections. A 17% increase in the BJP vote at national elections, 17% decrease at assembly. So has the world of elections changed? You're an election analyst. State assembly is one kind of fight, and there can be a two-party fight there, but different second party in each state. Mm -hmm. Well, there's always been some sort of a decoupling between state and national elections. Right. And voters always had, you know, the ability of making a distinction between the two. 
right. what we used to have was a strong spillover effect of a national election. Right. So once when you were when you had won a national election, honeymoon kind it of would, uh, it would basically carry on at least you know within the first year uh, yes, after that, yes, and that yeah. seems to be completely gone. gone. Right. But look at the performance of App in contrast with its performance in uh, 2019 in the general, general election. Elections, yeah. It lost. It did not win a single uh, assembly segment. Yeah. Came third. It came third with less than 20 percent. So it gained 35 percent of uh, vote share. And uh, between the Lok Sabha and this one, and that necessarily include a lot of people, a lot of voters who voted for BJP in the national elections and now decided that regardless of what they think, regardless of their support to Mr. Modi or regardless whether they feel a tune with the BJP rhetoric, decided that for a local election, uh, AAP was the better choice. You know, Pranay, to this point about the BJP focusing on hate, one of the reasons is also because they can't tackle the other elephant in the room, which is the economy. Right. So if you don't talk about this, then you have to end up talking about Bijli Pani issues. And with the economy tanking, with inflation going up, right. growth <laughs> falling down, what choice do you have? Right. So how do you get into but talking about jobs? How do you get into talking about the yeah, things that matter? Because the record there isn't great. Yeah, they had no alternative actually because they really couldn't. Talk. They had to divert. Yeah, but this whole uh, big segregation now between assembly elections mm -hmm. and Lok Sabha elections. You you pointed out mm -hmm. the seventeen percent vote yeah. difference. There always was a difference, but never seventeen percent. That's Mr. Modi's personal personal vote bank. Yeah. It was two thousand eight to two thousand nine. I think the swing was about. Percent. There is going 17%. 17 yeah, it's about the same, actually. Yeah. But here we have yeah. survey data yes, that indicates... Maybe it's changing over the last decade. Mm -hmm. that here we have survey data that in from CSDS that indicates that between a third and a quarter of BJP voters in the national election actually stated that you know they would have voted for a different party hadn't Mr. Modi been the prime ministerial right, candidate. Yeah. Right, right. It's an enormous yeah. chunk yeah. of the support base of that party. Mm -hmm. In yeah. fact, people on so the road told us in Karnataka, starting with Karnataka 18 months Rajasthan, ago, I'm voting for this party Pradesh. now, but for Mr. Modi. So, so, yes. here, here so BJP's, vote, yes, BJP's yes. vote in Delhi is 32 percent. Mm -hmm. What it gets on top of that is the Modi vote. So BJP got 56 percent in uh, Lok Sabha elections. Yeah. Yes. So that is the Modi vote. Yeah, well, they've got 38 percent now. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. so I'd say another six percent now is that leftover residual Modi vote. Or the Congress shift. That's what or it is Congress. actually. The, it's not but the but end but of the third I, party. Why wouldn't you say I, I, it's the I, hate I, I don't vote. agree that it's hmm? the Congress I mean, why shift. Why wouldn't you say that it's eight percent that? The BJP yeah. has gone up. Six percent. Yeah. Six percent. Yeah. Thirty-three no, to forty. Eight percent. Thirty-eight percent. Thirty-eight percent. Down to thirty-eight. Thirty-eight percent. Thirty-eight percent. Thirty-eight percent. Is I mean, it could. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, it could I be. The, it it could also could be the Hindutva vote. I mean, you know, because when I went around covering the elections. Nobody straight on, straight up said we are against CAA or NRC. They're like, no, no, we are. हम मोदी जी के समर्थन में हैं. हम CAA के समर्थन में हैं. पर इस बार हम झाड़ू को दे रहे हैं. Yes. So that was. You know, it was. It was basically bees. tactical. The that Delhi was because voters. of because of the free uh, bees, which was actually announced so and given by Aam Aadmi like Party, and especially no, I, uh, oh, after. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> free bees. Sorry. Yeah. 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 It's and called a social welfare measure. <laughs> yeah. You. I, I won't call them should, social welfare measure. You should read the work. I and wouldn't call actually, it a everybody social learns welfare. from the work of Abhijit Banerjee, the yeah. Nobel Prize winner, and Duflo, mm. where these welfare measures mm. uh, change people's lives. They make them more productive. They increase demand in the economy, which is what you need. Yeah. Don't call it a freebie. It's a very mm. upper class, upper caste thing. Oh, <laughs> give them no. a freebie. That does not it changes anything. people's lives. Giving them a cycle is not a freebie. It's changing a girl's but life. This is, but this is what they did. You know, as soon the as they are. came third uh, during uh, parliament elections, they actually realized that they are going to go nowhere in uh, assembly elections. And soon after that, they announced these free tickets for women but that's in a DTC positive. buses. Positive. You that's see, a woman saves 10,000 rupees no, a month or whatever. That is not spent on alcohol. No, 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 no. Yeah, that is spent on children, on food, on improving their lives. But then no, I disagree. No, no, no. But then you I call it social welfare measure no, no. on the same no, page. No, but then I disagree also, also. with their, this, uh, this uh, narrative where they say that people have voted uh, Aam Aadmi Party I want to ask based you, on development, uh, development and good governance. LPG no. cylinders free was a social uh, welfare measure or a freebie? See, but giving LPG uh, cylinder to, to families 
is is actually a, a requirement. But if you give so is free bus, bus tickets to women who can poor. afford, no, who can no, afford to buy that bus yeah. ticket, so it's a freebie does when the other side doesn't matter. <laughs> and no, when no. you do it, Here it's I a welfare measure. View. No, Here no. I have a different view. You can't have a different view. No, from from her. You know why? Why? Because you know one can question the timing. Sorry. One can question the timing. You know where he could have done it much before the moment he came, but. You know, so far as there are, there is a poverty in India. There is always a requirement of such a welfare scheme. You cannot deny that. Otherwise, pe people will simply reject it. They would not accept it because yeah. they're willing to pay. We still have a lot of distance to cover in terms of development. Yes, the central governments. You know, a lot of schemes are there which are uh, uh, welfare schemes <laughs> which are going in the right direction. But voters are demand much more today. Central right. government has given a certain. You know certain welfare That's schemes. That's an intelligent voter. No, who's doing a that is one thing. Index of voter smartness is, is increasing. Day Voters by day. are much smarter than politicians, yeah. right? Yes, certainly. <laughs> and 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 I'm not a politician. No. <laughs> <Okay>. Very <laughs> quickly become a voter. <laughs> See, we need, we need, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Before uh, that, uh, Derek O'Brien. Yeah, yeah. Joining us uh, off the Trinamool Congress, uh, Derek O'Brien. Thanks uh, for uh, joining us. Now the Trinamool Congress, one of the first parties of the block to congratulate. Arvind Kejriwal and Mamta Banerjee Did actually said at a rally yeah. saying that she's spoken to Kejriwal and she sees the Delhi election result as an indication that the BJP is becoming a stateless party. It is losing state after state, it is becoming a stateless party. Is that a bit of an exaggeration? No, not at all. It's not, not, a, not an exaggeration at all and you said that uh, Mamotadi and uh, Trinamool Congress had congratulated Arvind Kejriwal and his team. Not only congratulated them, but two weeks ago we uh, publicly uh, went out and uh, wished them well and requested voters of Delhi to vote for them. So it's a, it's a, it's a good win and uh, I think uh, stateless is good because that's the facts on the ground. They're losing state after state, so it was a simple way of expressing something. They're getting stateless. She also said that this is a reflection on how the CAA, the NRC and the NPR have been rejected by the people and I think uh, it's very very clear that in spite of all the dirty tricks, in spite of um, <coughs> Mr. Modi and Mr. Shah literally going, going all out to 150 MPs there, 20 odd ministers and all kinds of things but uh, I think I want to use this opportunity to congratulate and bow my head down to the people of Delhi because uh, eventually uh, this is the H factor which also had a role to play which is the humility factor and uh, at the Trinamool Mahmoud always keeps telling us that in no matter how big the win you have to be humble and just keep doing good work that's Derek what we're doing in Bengal yeah. and I'm sure that's I, uh, you know uh, we are in North India right now and I shocked everybody and nobody still <laughs> believes me. I just want to verify again okay, that go. the state <laughs> last year with the highest GDP growth rate was West Bengal with 12.59 growth rate. Nobody believed me. Plus, you have done a lot of uh, social welfare measures which uh, some people call freebies. So, do you expect... The and you're already, you're freebies. already facing a pretty vitriolic opposition. BJP is pretty vitriolic in Bengal. Is that going to get worse or after, Beng after Delhi is that going to soften? You see, the Trinamool Congress was founded in 1998. And we've taken on quite a few of, the, of this, these kind of campaigns, and even 2000, for a long, long while. But to go back to your point about the great work which has been done, the no. GDSP, the state uh, GDP output, well, absolutely, you, you take that, you take skill development, you take MSME Bengal number one, you take ease of doing business, oh, no. you take a scheme like Kanyashri, which is 700 times better than Beti Bachao. A lot of good work has happened and I think the people of Delhi were very clever. The people of Bengal know, they trust Mahmoud Banerjee, they trust the Trinamool Congress, but today, you know, Dr. Roy, yeah. today is not the day for big talk because big talk has no GST. So we don't need to do any big talk. That's we're a good quietly point. doing our work. Derek O'Brien. Uh, quietly doing our work. Derek O'Brien, I, I mm. want to ask you one thing though, because you and Aam Aadmi Party mm. do have a common link, and that is Prashant Kishore, who's advising you, and now he's also been advising the Aam Aadmi Party. One and of the now Stalin as well. And now he's with Stalin. One of the things we've noticed is that 
Prashant Kishore's clients, so to speak, do seem to change tack. They become less aggressive, less combative. They stop directly attacking Narendra Modi. Is that a fair description yes. of, of this new no, firstly, strategy? Firstly, let me tell you, no, no, no. Firstly, let me tell you the only link that is a professional assignment where we've hired a, we've, where we've hired a, a professional. I think the, uh, the bigger link and the, the key link, if you want to find the link between Aam Admi Party, Ar uh, Arvind Kejriwal and Mamta Banerjee and the DMK and Stalin, no, there the common link is only one word and that is the people. Mamta Banerjee believes that that is the most important thing. People, you work for the people, you become if a servant you face, of the people. If, if, if in this campaign, sorry, sorry to interrupt. If so you let me face answer in the this second camp part of your question. Okay, let go me, ahead, go ahead. Dr. Roy, let me just answer yeah, the yeah, second yeah, part yeah, of yeah, sorry, the sorry. Srinivasan's question. Sorry. Yeah. The, second, the second part is, you, uh, you, you look at how aggressive we are in parliament. We don't want to be just negative and attack you for the sake of attacking you. No. If we, we, we believe that good work, you mm. try and break uh, parliament precedent and, and, and you know you break all the rules in parliament, we'll come and attack you full on. Attack, attack, attack. But not s just for the sake of attacking. We want to really be a constructive opposition. You will see what will happen in Bengal in the municipal results before the assembly. In April, May, we'll probably have the municipal elections. I'm sure we're going to do very, very well. And after that comes the assembly. But as I said, today is not the day for big talk. Okay. Today is the day. Today is Aam Admi Party Day. Let's <laughs> celebrate that win and congratulate the people of Delhi. Last question. Are you going to? Uh, are you anticipating a vitriolic, hate-filled campaign against you? It's already, to some extent, started. Yeah. But will these results of Delhi have an impact on the BJP leadership in Bengal? See, I cannot comment here on what their strategy will be in Bengal, but uh, bring it on. There is only uh, one Royal Bengal Tigress. Bring it on. <laughs> bring it on. The people of Bengal are very, very sure of what they will do. Not because of what Trinamool Congress have to go and say in their election speeches. Because the people of Bengal understand the great work which has happened here since 2011. The people of Bengal <coughs> understand that we have a particular idea of India. The people of Bengal understand that there are certain values we all stand for. Right. And it doesn't matter what religion you belong to, right. what you eat, what you drink and what you wear. The people of Bengal also understand that with Mamta Banerjee, Bengal has, is and will always be in good hands as we go ahead. Okay. All right. Thanks Thank you. very much. Thanks, Thank Derek O'Brien. Thanks very Thank much you. indeed. It's a pleasure. So, you wanted to say, sorry. Yes, no, go ahead. You know, I want to add my bit to this debate on freebies right. because mm -hmm. rather than looking at the real factors for the defeat of the BJP, the, the family, the Sangh Parivar family, how is it reacting? You know, some initial indications. Right. <laughs> there, is a, there is a post on their very popular uh, WhatsApp groups which says, Admi ko samajdar hona chahiye. Admi ko samajdar hona chahiye. Padhe likhe to Dilli wale bhi hai. Na desh se matlab, na dharm se matlab. Na desh se matlab, na dharm se matlab. Bas keval muft kori chahiye. This must end. If they want to really have an no, no, there I agree. No, no. Hmm? There I agree. Yeah. Secondly, no, no. see this na desh se matlab na dharm se matlab. It arises out of a certain narrative that the BJP set after 2014 and which has become intensified after 2019. But you no? said something this morning no? where you said the RSS will be slightly disturbed by the kind of campaign. Yeah, I tell you why. Hmm. I tell you why. Because the narrative was, if you are not with us, then you are against the nation. You are anti-national. Yeah. And if you are a Hindu and not with the BJP, mm -hmm. you are anti-Hindu. This is the narrative. Bhaiyaji now, Joshi Bhaiyaji Joshi, Joshi, just a few yeah. days ago, has made a very, very uh, yeah. significant yeah. statement that just because mm -hmm. you are against the BJP does not mean you are not a Hindu. Hmm? 
Now, we should welcome this statement. As uh, uh, was said, uh, you know, earlier, it is the Hindus who have defeated the BJP here. Right. It is the Hindus who have defeated the BJP in Jharkhand. <coughs> So well, therefore, if they want to have an honest introspection, <coughs> they must move away from this polarizing Hindu versus Muslim <coughs> and they must also move away. So will the RSS come important. out and be critical about this whole campaign? You know, it is the responsibility of all of us. You know, if, if the RSS is saying this, it is because there is a very strong sentiment in the country today, especially these tens of thousands of young people, most of them Hindus, who are protesting against this narrative and therefore this our protest non-violent very reason based Here protest must in. intensify and force the BJP to change its, its line otherwise the people will reject the BJP even in the I national election. I just want election. to make a quick point. Okay. See, just just, just one say, second since I he spoke know, about just RSS. Just let, let, yeah. Let, yeah. 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 We'll Can come back we'll come to both of you. I just want to say that we were talking about Raghav Chandha and Rajendra Nagar, which is his constituency. That is an old Jansang fort. Mm. So the fact that that Jansang BJP fort was breached today, so one should find out how they went not to Congress but to AAP, which is a huge jump to make from uh, from Jansang to Aam Aadmi Party. For this election. So I would, for, for this, this election, election. I mean, in any case, you know, they always have a little bit of an oasis and then they go. But this time, uh, the jump was made. So I would say that when we find out how, uh, you know, whether that is also an affluent area. So whether it was schools and free buses, etc., I'm not even sure about that. I think that w we will, when we uh, analyze this, there's going to be a turning away from this kind of strategy of <coughs> hate. And also, I would, uh, Shikha, uh, would I, I'm not sure mm -hmm. that we have exiled Pakistan from our elections as of today. <laughs> <laughs> I just hope so. Shekhar, would you agree with that? Well, uh, what are the I don't lessons? Th well, uh, people p pick the lessons that suit them. Uh, That's very, <laughs> this is very like superficial television uh, <laughs> statement. No, it, 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 it it, it might be a superficial a, statement, but, much more in a, depth but it's, a, it's a truthful <laughs> statement. Okay. So BJP will take the lessons they want, others will take the lessons they want. Now, What's the so lesson you took? Now, now freebies, first of all, what you call freebies, welfare, whatever. If you have surpluses, you should distribute, but you should create surpluses first. Right. That's where I disagree with Abhijit and the rest because they want 80% tax. Having said that, <laughs> having said that, to. now the question is... That's all 80% tax. That's so unfair. He, he does. No, no, no. no, no he no, does. No, he no, does. No, he does. No, no, no. He, he's supporting Elizabeth Warren. So... Uh, <laughs> That's not 80% tax. 80% tax. 77%. So... Uh, oh. So, uh, so, uh, so uh, the po to the point that whether this <laughs> hate will be forgotten politician. and yeah. Pakistan will be exiled, I'm afraid such a thing will not happen. Yeah, I because agree next with that. year you have Assam and West Bengal. Yeah. Yes. This formula has been devised for Assam and West Bengal. Yeah. BGP mm -hmm. has nothing else to go to Assam and West Bengal with. There's no other car well. except Hindu. So Tua. just as in, in military jargon, we have the concept of a heat seeking missile, which yeah. is very deadly and very effective. This is the BJP's hate seeking missile. Yeah. Hate seeking. <laughs> <laughs> Why would they give it up? And I, I don't think RSS will be opposed That's to it. That's how the Bengalis say heat. Uh, hate. Uh, <laughs> RSS will not be opposed to it in West Bengal and Assam because that's where they've got caught in a web of their own making. They held an NRS, NRC in Assam which has caught more Hindus than Muslims. <laughs> now RSS in the appeal it? process, more Hindus are, more Muslims <laughs> are coming out than Hindus. By the time the third appeal ends, there'll be very few Muslims left. So now, <laughs> But you know, on, on this I point, think if we can just factual, bring in factual corrections, if I can just bring in, no, no, let me just bring in Supreme Court, Chari. which did it in no, no, sure. yes, but, you, but you backed it, you backed it, fully, it yeah. supported it, fully but, supported. But you got caught in it because too many Hindus. And the let Supreme me Court let me also it. say, then our view Supreme on Court. CA is very clear. Okay. We are for CA. However, we don't, you know, approve of the language that has been used here. Okay, certainly. Let's just let's just get Seshadri Chari also in on this. Seshadri Chari, you know, one of the things that has been somewhat surprising. Modi 1 compared to Modi 2, if you look at all the big flagship schemes that this government has announced, they've all been in Modi 1.0, whether it was Ujwala, whether it was Jandhan and so on and so forth, even PM Kisan, it was all in the first Modi government. Now in Modi 2.0, that's virtually vanished. Is this a problem? Is this now also politically becoming a problem for you, that the focus has shifted much more to a kind of divisive agenda? 
No, I don't think uh, any of these programs have been withdrawn. They have been announced and uh, some of these programs are taking shape and uh, the earlier budget and this year's budget also has provided for all these programs. So there is nothing to prove or nothing to say that some of these programs have been either withdrawn or vanished. Of course, you cannot keeping on. You cannot keep on going with uh, this kind of uh, quote unquote. Uh, you call it freebies, or you call it social uh, engagement programs, or you call it uh, socialist programs, or you call it uh, distribution of uh, extra income program, or whatever it is. But these, some of these programs are born out of sheer necessity of the people. Uh, in order to elevate uh, a sec large section of the people from the line of poverty. More such programs may come. Uh, every government, even the earlier government thought of Narega and Manrega. So this government continued Narega, Manrega with a new vigor, new programs. As far as divisive politics is concerned, we have heard enough of it. I do not think we should think in terms of politics as being divisive. And, and limit it only to election. Every election and uh, Pranay Roy asked about uh, um, uh, the elections being very divisive uh, to Raghav Chedda. But I think every election somebody or the other from some party or the other or from all the parties put together speak about all these things. But and uh, if you carry Chari, these things post election, Chari, it's a bit unfair to yes, say leading, every party does it. Yeah. The voters. No, isn't it a bit like it's a, like every party Indira does Gandhi says is a global uh, corruption is a global phenomenon. Let me tell you. No, don't you think the BJP took it? No, one second, just let me ask the question because you made a very strong statement. Every party does it. Don't you think in this election the BJP took it to a new height? And do you feel? My question is. When someone like Anurag Thakur says Goli Maro, should the senior leadership say that's a wrong thing to say? Some signal or just keep quiet like they <coughs> did. I don't think I've ever heard an election campaign no. and I've covered it for 75 years. Has ever Shaheen, anybody said Goli Shaheen Maro? Bhag. 1936 you covered also. <laughs> Shaheen Bhag. You and I. Absolutely. Some of the speeches, some of the speeches made in Shaheen Bhag was very much This is your party person, if, your party somebody, person making no, a speech, Shaheen not Bagh a student. Was, Shaheen Bag was not BJP's making. No, no, I'm saying. Shaheen Bag was not no, BJP's no, no, making. I'm saying Tukre your Tukre party was people. Not BJP's uh, Chari, making. Chari, you're a very sensible and, person. And, Don't rush this under the carpet. No, let it's an me, important let me issue complete. for our country. Let me complete. I'm, I'm, no, my, my being a sensible person does not mean that I should keep on accepting everything that is being said on any television. No, no, no. I am trying to be as sensible as possible, but if you want to haul BJP over hot coal yeah. only because they have lost this election, please correct yourselves. We no, can no, speak no. about Who all these things some other time. Everybody haul them over the point, coal for the, point. Let me make my for the point. hate in the hate filled let campaign. Let me make my point, Pranav. Whether they win or lose. Pranay, let Don't me make my, my point. Don't fight with my columnist. My limited point Don't fight with my columnist. Which is mine? Oh, print or something? <laughs> 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 the print dot in. Oh, no, I, it out. I, I wrote about <laughs> this. No, I wrote about this. Goli Maro, this is Jharu Maro. Print is back. Seshadi Chari, the point is. I said this. Even, even if, even if uh, I know that the BJP goes on citing Shaheen Bagh as a provocation for making those statements, which is an odd provocation because the people who are saying things there, they're not fighting in this election. They are essentially, as far as the political space is concerned, non-entities. Yes. So, to respond, yes. to have a minister, right. to have an MP, to have a chief minister respond to that by making hate-filled, hate violent comments, which they're getting docked by the election commission. Surely that's something that the BJP should crack down on. Why were these leaders not suspended? See, I don't. Why were they not disciplined? Let, let me let me complete. I am going to make two sentences. One, that particular minister probably should not have said this. I do agree that he need not have said this. He could have been a little more careful. A, B. What we always say is the first part of the sentence, Goli Maro Desh Ke Gaddaron Ko. 
सो वाई वेन ए से देश के गद्दारों को वाई शुड यू प्रोटेस्ट रिमेम्बर ए बी आई डू कंग्रेचुलेट आम आदमी पार्टी एंड अरविंद केजरीवाल फॉर द स्पेक्टेकुलर विक्ट्री बट इन स्पाइट ऑफ दैट लेट मी टेल यू हिज पोलिटिकल करियर इन टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन यू रिमेम्बर मेनी पीपल फर्गेट दैट ही कंटेस्टेड अगेंस्ट नरेंद्र मोदी इन वाराणसी एंड ऑल इज मीटिंग फोटोग्राफ्स इफ यू सी ही इज वेरिंग ए स्कल कैप ही वॉज ओनली एड्रेसिंग द मुस्लिम गैदरिंग the number of muslim now oh, chari i think you are really gone and met oh, and for the campaign chari this is not the old chari what so happened chalo theek hai you have said you criticize that let's stop there political party every political party every political party every political leader has devised his own strategy to win elections arvind kejriwal devised a very different strategy this time he has won absolutely right. great and okay. i really appreciate some of the candidates that he has chosen some of the candidate he has chosen and some yeah. of the people who have won in the name of aam aadmi party are really good okay. i would appreciate if they are allowed to do good work excellent yeah that's a fair wow. point well, i mean <laughs> what do we where do we go from we'll come back we to just, you on the other think, issues yeah we we I, just I, have a I, minute I think, left i think so it, uh, to some extent achari uh, saab is right in the sense that many parties use nationalism or divisive methods indira gandhi said the foreign hand she said cia agents so remember pilu modi when we were young pilu modi came to parliament with a badge saying i am a cia mm. agent right uh, he laughed it away rajiv gandhi's campaign in 1984 don't forget rajiv gandhi ka elan nahi banega khalistan and the campaign that the diffusion put out with bob wire and stuff so but it's a question of degree yes. and it's a question of how much you push it yes uh, in, and also how you can use it for a campaign i'm not saying it's a good thing but then let it be in this case this is now continued on relentlessly from state to state to state to state right it's uh, a matter of degree also yeah. i'm glad you have to go back 35 years to find congress examples <laughs> we have <laughs> live examples right now <laughs> <laughs> congress wasn't and before. this is even well, the congress has not been winning any election <laughs> for the last 20 congress, years congress has, has had a majority since then well the thing is that we actually uh, keep saying this we count hate we count vip hate and this should really settle the debate because we've been counting it for a decade now yeah. it was 21 instances under upa2 it shot to 174 instances under modi1 that's a 700% jump under modi2 it's already 90 instances just in the first 8 months of modi2 so yeah and this is 97% of these hate filled comments are coming from the bjp so it's really not let a me, it's not me, both sides it's not everybody does it i think if you look point, at a 10 year yeah, period a way, those, it's just very no, clear and these kind of quantitative person, differences lead yes. to a qualitative change in politics so let, i think that's the degree you're talking to this yes, suddenly let, everything let, changes let Absolutely. me answer wasu here you know when you're talking you about this comparative question. analysis anybody who you know uh, gives this hate speeches from the other side it is not considered hate speech no we Anything count all parties no, no, no. says, we count all no, parties this this data you know you have to been, accept it no, no, there was a no, difference see the fact and is and then aage chalo no no, 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 no. we we'll happily see, share the data we, by we the way we know we know the mode and style of campaigning has changed now and yeah, it it is yeah. affecting everybody yeah. and it has to be toned down that is also a, a bottom fact. line okay, fine, one fine. and secondly uh, we'll just take a quick break and come back uh, Yeah sure uh, so much to discuss the implications of this election for the future back after this short break
Delhi Jharu sweeps. <laughs> oh, still Aap on Jharu, that. Jharu <laughs> sweeps Delhi. Then we'll have to get into West Bengal growth rate of lower base. No, let's, uh, so you know what? Uh, uh, you know what happened? Others have picked it up. Hmm? What? From Pune. Jharu sweeps. Jharu sweeps Delhi. <laughs> That's him. Vasus, Vasus. He keeps blaming me. I blame no, him. No, no. It's it's nobody here. No one on this table. <laughs> Everybody is denying yeah. such. Everyone's denying it. But uh, Chandan Mitra, like. To this, you know, to this point about West Bengal, huh. what's your reading of it? Do you feel that the BJP is going to be even more aggressive? Look, BJP now gained gained a lot during the Lok Sabha election. They carried out a fairly hardline campaign, and it got a lot of resonance right. from that. But I feel it's still premature for the BJP to think of winning the state. And forming a government there, because the organizational base is not strong enough. But they will improve. Their vote percentage is going up with every passing election. Let's see how the municipal elections go, and the with this consecutive gains, I think they will be coming close to the mm, majority mark. Yeah. So the substantial gains probably on the way. But it can't be said with confidence that they will form the next government. That is probably too much. Right. Right. But that's quite a big statement to say the BJP is going to come close to the halfway mark in the next probably, assembly election. Probably. Probably. I said. I mean, it is still too early. But they have they jumped quite a bit in the last Lok Sabha election. But then you see Lok Sabha election again. But that was There's a vote a, for Modi. Right. There was a vote Very for Modi, different. but then earlier Very Modi true. was not such a factor in Bengal. We've got actually just a second. We've got Yogendra Yadav uh, joining us. Uh, thanks very much. We missed you this morning. There's nothing mm. that beats your analysis, and somehow you managed to keep your politics and your analysis separate. Uh, and you've always been the finest cephologist in India. I've said that for 25 years, mm. and uh, it's a real pity. Come back to cephology. Anyway, <laughs> give us your quick reading of this election. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's, he's shaking his head. He's I'm not coming back. He's not mad. This is. No, I, I was only saying that I must be a failure as a politician to, <laughs> for you to remember all this. <laughs> and you're contributing to it by wishing me more failures. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, on to the specific thing of this election. I think the, uh, look, look, first of all, what an extraordinary feat. Uh, I, I can't personally recall, maybe the Rab Ken, another party securing 50% plus votes in two elections, almost 90% seats consecutively in two elections. This is extraordinary. extraordinary. Aam Admi Party must be saluted for what they have done. This is not something you do normally. And, uh, uh, the perseverance, and especially in the face of the fact that uh, they had suffered serious reversals in Lok Sabha election, that the regime was particularly hostile to them, and that election commission was also somewhat ambivalent where it should not have been. In the face of all that, to have the kind of success that they did is extraordinary. Uh, to my mind, uh, uh, what we need to also remember uh, is that uh, what they have done is to replicate a formula which has been uh, used for quite some time now. This is a formula used by Nitish Kumar, by Naveen Patnayak, by Raman Singh and by Mr. Modi himself in the second and third election that he faced. Namely, focus on one or two welfare schemes and ensure direct delivery of that. Don't bother about general improvement of governance. Just focus on one or two schemes do delivery and then publicize it in a very big way and finally keep a good election machine ready to convert that into votes. Now this is a somewhat standard template. Uh, what Aam Admi Party did was to use that template to the hilt. Uh, the Bijli thing, uh, electricity, cheap electricity worked. Uh, education probably did not improve but the school infrastructure did. Mohalla clinics were not delivering as much, but they at least held out a promise of better health delivery. This is what then was publicized in a big way. Uh, you know, everyone then obviously forgot about corruption, about environment, about transport and such like, because people actually work with very moderate expectations in this country. With that, uh, they have a strong organizational machine. 
Uh, and in the face of all that very provocative and extremely vitriolic campaign that the BJP launched, they kept their nerves and stuck to that, which is what they have been rewarded for. Right. But Yogendra, I want to ask you, uh, since you were very much part of the ARP project uh, before you parted ways, that when you now look at their success, firstly, do you have any regrets about getting off the, you know, the, the ARP juggernaut? And also, what is the change you see between the Arvind Kejriwal of earlier and of now? Uh, Masu, the question of regret doesn't arise because we went to Ahmadmi Party with a completely different set of expectations. The Ahmadmi Party that I joined was a party that sought to change the way politics is done in this country, <laughs> not merely to become one more successful political party. They already were successful political parties and people like me could have joined one of them. We didn't want to. Uh, we were there to offer a new model of governance. We were there to offer, to try and change the way politics was being done. Uh, unfortunately, that was not happening. Uh, we did not come out. We were thrown out, just to put the record straight, we were thrown out for anti-party activities of a kind which, anyway, let's forget about all that. Yes. Uh, to my mind, these are difficult challenges. I do realize that these things cannot be done overnight. Uh, but you can do one of the two things. Uh, either you can succeed in the given rules of the game or you can try and forge somewhat different rules of the game. Uh, Arvind Kejriwal chose one path. Uh, we have uh, chosen the other path, uh, which hmm. is probably difficult, more long term. But I don't regret that one bit, uh, Vasu. At least I can stand up and say abrogation of Article 370 is wrong. Uh, I can at least say CAA is a challenge to the foundations of this country. I can go to Shaheen Bagh. I can speak there. I doubt if I would have been able to do that if I was there. And I very much value this freedom Yogendra. and ability to speak about things that I want to speak about. Okay. Yogendra, I'll, I'll give you one little interesting snippet of information, cephalogical and bore everybody. <laughs> and then I'll ask you a question after that, unrelated. We had all 70 postal votes in and the postal votes showed up getting 58 they ended up with 62 <coughs> and we thought postal votes are way out and they were not a bad forecast if you use just postal votes it was 58 for up that was quite incredible uh, but beyond that how do, can you just explain uh, the importance in assembly elections going ahead of this election is it going to change things? Is the opposition going to learn that alliances matter? Is the BJP going to get less strident or carry on being as strident and vitriolic? What's the impact of uh, Bengal elections going to be? Both cephalogically, alliance arithmetic, and politically. Delhi elections. Sorry, Delhi. Yeah. Delhi. Uh, one thing on postal ballot. Actually, I'm surprised, Dr. Roy, because uh, as you yeah. would have noticed, uh, some other polls have shown that the gradient on education is very steep in this election. As education goes up, Ahmadmi Party's vote share goes down very, very sharply. I saw in one of the exit polls. Really? So I'm actually somewhat surprised, but then one always learns. Right. On the right. impact of this election, I think it confirms one trajectory that we have seen now for some time. Uh, this incidentally is the ninth successive state assembly election. I counted from Karnataka 2018 where BJP was a serious contender and failed to win a majority. Uh, so yes, something is going wrong at the state level. One interesting cephalogical thing which is happening is that in the 1970s and 80s, when you started teaching us, mm -hmm. everyone voted in uh, state assembly elections as if they were choosing a prime minister. Right. In 90s and 2000s, when people like me entered mm. this thing called cephalogy, people voted in national elections as if they were choosing their chief minister. <laughs> now for the first time we seem That's to have arrived at a stage where people choose prime minister in the national election and they choose chief minister in the state assembly elections, which is how it should be. Mm -hmm. But to the final and third and the most important question, what is the lesson for the BJP? One lesson could be that people like me believe should be drawn, which is people don't like this kind of vitriolic hate campaign. Uh, but I heard Dr. Sopandas Gupta on another channel 
he was drawing exactly the opposite conclusion. He <laughs> said, look, our vote share has gone up by 7 to 8 percent points. That <coughs> worries me. I really hope they don't draw that conclusion. I think it's a false conclusion. But I also think it's a dreadful conclusion. And I am one of those who really dread the forthcoming West Bengal elections. I dread it for the following yeah. reason. There is no way BJP can win it normally. Although Dr. Chandan Mitra was somewhat more optimistic, I really respect his knowledge. My sense is that in the normal course, BJP won't be able to win it. BJP must polarize and communalize it to the hilt. And Dr. Roy, Bengal has a very sordid history, 1940s, 1950s. I fear BJP is taking Bengal back to that. So either I fear 1940s being played out, or I fear 1972 election of West Bengal, where Siddharth Shankar Ray had almost rigged the entire it election. It was rigged, yeah. I, because winning Bengal is critical. Without EVMs. Uh, winning Bengal is critical to BJP. Yeah, without EVM. This was plain, simple, old-style rigging mm -hmm. that the BJP... And Nalini was the first the to expose it, ballot paper time. rigging, yeah. I don't know why you see that. Mm -hmm. I just want to ask you... That's right. It, so it I is a very important Bengal, point really you raise. I something of that kind of thing. <coughs> yeah. Very important point you raise. BJP vote did go up by 5%. No, 8%. No, 33 to 38 points. 38 now. No, here. The, your, your channel is showing 8%. BJP plus. No, BJP, no, the BJP, BJP plus, plus allies. Yeah. It's for Anyway, okay, five, six, seven, it went up. Would that have happened anyway because of anti-incumbency if there wasn't any hate? Or was that because of hate? I mean, it's like when you have an aspirin, your headache goes away, but it would have gone away anyway, or it, it would have got much worse. So what, what was the reason for this increase in the BJP vote and the total decimation of the Congress? Well, your remark actually brought out the reason. Uh, what happens is that the combined vote share of the first two parties increases because the third party is almost decimated. Yeah. That's happening uh, across the, Congress, the country. Uh, lost about five percentage points. Right. Exactly. And I believe others also lost mm -hmm. a bit. Mm -hmm. So the combined vote pool of Congress and the Aam Aadmi Party has increased slightly. And uh, so in, in effect, Aam Aadmi Party has lost a certain share compared to last time. And BJP's mm. share has gone up slightly. I do think that if BJP had done yeah, a more somewhat respect. more sensible campaign, mm. if they had anything to show by way of MCD performance, if they had any leader who could look like a leader, <laughs> or if he, they had something concrete to say in manifesto, or if they had even made something of the real thing that they did sort of deliver, namely of, uh, the, authorized, uh, the, the unauthorized colonies and the authorization, uh, they would have added that much. I personally do not think Ask that you. this uh, hate campaign actually secured additional votes for mm -hmm. the BJP. It may have simply enthused their good old voter who was going to vote for them anyway. Can I ask you a question? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, hi, Yogen Sagarika here. I, I just wanted to ask you, Yogen, uh, you know, the extraordinary success of Aam Aadmi Party, as you said, is this model, the Aam Aadmi Party model, a scalable one. Do you think you see it going to other states? Because you know we've seen how uh, Arvind Kejriwal uh, has did not do well in Punjab. He lost his <laughs> deposits in Goa. He's not been able to open his account anywhere. So, do you think that the Kejriwal model that we have at the moment uh, can go to other states? Is it scalable? <coughs> if I may add to that, uh, that you know. We, uh, <coughs> hey, um, Yogen, if you will just take my uh, supplementary to Sagarika's question. The point is, if uh, is it at all replicable without AAP um, forming a government? AAP was able to do all this, you know, cut um, electricity pr prices, water, um, free water supply, uh, free buses, uh, bus rides for women, because they were in power. Now, they have not been in power anywhere else. Without being in power, do you think that it is possible at all to replicate the Delhi model in other states? Yeah, because they de-ideologized. Well, Delhi is also a very rich state. Uh, we yeah, Delhi is also a rich state, other states are not. Yeah. So, is it is it is it particular to Delhi and its governance or you know, can it be taken to other 
states and replicated? Look, in all fairness, since uh, probably no Ahmadmi Party spokesperson is here, one has to be yeah. fair to that. Uh, uh, in all fairness, the model was uh, initially a national model. The whole idea was to create a model in one state and then to take it to the rest of the country. When we chose, at that time, I was member of Ahmadmi Party, we actually thought very carefully about Himachal Pradesh election, which took place much before Delhi, and said, okay, that probably doesn't work. So Delhi was only meant to be the first step, the first a model. Aam Aadmi Party was never meant to be a regional political party. Mm. But uh, I think certain things happened in Delhi, uh, some things which are very peculiar to Delhi, the fact that it is communication dense place, the fact that it's uh, geographically very small, that caste cleavages, caste divisions are not very sharp here. Uh, all that, to, and, and that it has excessive media attention. Mm -hmm. All that worked to the advantage mm -hmm. of Aam Party. I'm sure Arvind would wish is to be scalable, but in order to be scalable, there are certain <coughs> things that they would need to do. I'm sure they can do so. Uh, one, to have a vision for India. Uh, I don't quite see it, but then it could be that I'm somewhat prejudiced. Uh, two, it would need a leadership which is beyond Delhi's local leadership and mm -hmm. ability to trust. This is what happened in Punjab. No ability to trust any leader from Punjab. And Punjabis felt insulted by that. Uh, right. It would also yeah. mean a, a, an ability to, to, to uh, develop a De a develop a governance agenda for rural India, for agriculture, which uh, the kind of things that they have not yet paid attention to. I'm not saying that they cannot, but so far what Aam Aadmi Party has done is to master the existing rules of the game and play the game very much by the existing rules. And that is what has happened in this election. BJP has managed to shift the ideological spectrum of the country to the right. Aam Aadmi Party also shifted to the right. They followed the median voter, which is a classical political science wisdom, mm. that there is a spectrum of ideology, and whichever is the median voter, yeah, yeah. everyone chases that. Yeah. Aam Aadmi Party has been chasing it. But if they want to be a national alternative, they would <laughs> need to develop the capacity to shift the ideological spectrum back. Would they one, do one, so? One, That's a big question. One last thing, Yogendra, again, self logical and everybody can go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you impressed by the accuracy of exit polls and in particularly of access for India today? It, and their record has been remarkable. Uh, I was going to say even by your standards, but maybe yours <coughs> were very high as well. As good as your standards, but <coughs> aren't you pleased to see that the, the exit polls were very, very good this time? Uh, absolutely. In terms of vote, uh, I mean, I, I can't speak of my standards. I think these are much better <laughs> polls, much better exit polls. Uh, uh, <laughs> everyone has uh, learned lessons from last time, which is exit polls tended to be conservative. Last time also everyone's data showed that Aam Aadmi could get 60 seats, but no one dared say so. So everyone stopped at 45 or 50. So they've now learned to do it better. On Access My India, you know, I was particularly impressed with their Haryana poll. You know, yes, where mm, every yes, day yes. they had the courage to differ from everyone risk. else. And you understand more than anyone else how difficult it is to put your neck out yes. and say something which no one else is saying right. and then be proven right. That was, that was when I really said, you know, hats off to them, saluted them. Right. This time also they, they took the courage to say 60 plus where others did not. And, and I, uh, yes, sephology is improving, <coughs> is much better after I left it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I also must compliment uh, Arun Puri for having the guts to let them say these, uh, as you say, Absolutely. far out numbers and stick with it and not interfere. Like, th he tried to change Dorab's numbers, but mm -hmm. he didn't manage, so he's learned from that. Dora but, was always spot on. But you know, even better than Master. the access exit poll was this viral video of the pollster and Rajdeep dancing, dancing, yeah, dancing yeah. in the studio. Yeah, that's that funny. was just right. like a, it just ended Spoken everything. Like a true that helped the focus. That was better than the poll. Yeah. Well, I mean, you like, you love, <laughs> you, you love dancing. So. He's been in being Rajdeep's dancing talent for 
ever. Oh yes, especially after that video. <laughs> By the way, he's a damn good dancer. Why don't you? <laughs> Ratings. Are, you have a cause. There's a nice. Be karega. There's a nice little dance. We have a cause. But let's just welcome. <laughs> let's yeah. let's just welcome Sora Bharadwaj uh, is here in the studio with us. Uh, Ahmadi Party. Congratulations. To Many you. congratulations. Thank Sora you. Sora Bharadwaj. Victory. He's our member. He's our. Well, he's yes. He's in IG. He's NDP. He's MLA. I think uh, I'm MLA for yes, Sadrika, and I'm MLA for uh, Pranoy, and I'm MLA for. Bro, I didn't know that. For, for NDTV, NDTV office. For NDTV. Yeah. Okay. Now so you're, you're in deep so trouble. Bad, yeah, I know, I know. So we have our entire so list I... of uh, grievances here, <laughs> ready to hand it over to you. <laughs> but uh, Saurabh Bharadwaj, congratulations. <laughs> just, just a second, Saurabh Bharadwaj, congratulations. I think. Uh, you know, it was very interesting what you were telling us in the afternoon. I think uh, several panelists here may have missed it about the nature of this campaign yes. and how you said that it was one of the toughest, almost you would say the dirtiest yes. campaign that you faced on the ground. Yes, frankly, you know, uh, this was my third election which mm. I was contesting uh, and uh, I had never had a, you know, face to face to face with polarization till now, okay. I have heard it that it happens in Bengal, it happened in UP, but this time uh, we faced it and it is very dirty. And I think Delhi faced it for the first time because not just me, mm. even people you know who, who are basically kind of you know <coughs> bade bude types, they were also saying we, they have never seen such kind of election in Delhi. So how does it actually, when you say you faced and it, how does it manifest itself? How does it actually uh, play the, out? The right. biggest problem with uh, polarized and the dirty election is that there is so much of noise around. That so much is so much of gali, gulaj, and you know accusations. And because you don't want to polarize it, you don't react to it. So an audience is usually very silent. They don't react. Okay, so you don't know what they are thinking. Right. And and whosoever is getting communalized knows that commun being communal is a bad thing. So he will never let you know that I am communal. He will just hide it. He will not tell it to anyone. Probably he may share it to few Very close clear, friends. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the biggest problem that you mm. don't know that you are losing mm. vote share. Yeah. But you are losing it every day. Right. And and you know that polarization thing is so strong, so dangerous that you know it can it can cut across anything you know you do whatever work tum sone chandi ki roads bhi bana doge to bhi polarization can you know mm. take away all the credit from you and the biggest example for you is manish shishodia you know uh, like whatever development we claim in education mm. was because of him and and we could see him losing because of polarization and uh, so th this is very dangerous and for me also you know and the worst thing very, about very polarization well is very that polarization doesn't happen, is not happening much in illiterates or in the lower class. The polarization happens in the people who love to drink scotch in the night and talk about economy, mm. development, <laughs> world, that's, and you know, international. That's like, that's like nobody around no, this no. table. So, <laughs> so uh, mother, I mean, I mean to say the majority, you know, it, it basically affects that, you know, English speaking class. Uh, that you know they just hide that dirt inside nobody they don't want to let anybody know that they are so communal inside but they are but but you know one it's of the most disturbing very things very correct actually one, one of the most disturbing things pranoy which Saurabh was saying if you can just describe that again about the was, scotch well <laughs> that too <laughs> but about about what you heard as you were as people were going to vote and then the slogans that were and what they were being told and 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 you cannot believe that you know uh, it's okay that you know uh, we could hear uh, national level uh, hero uh, uh, leaders and state level leaders talking about Hindu, Muslim, Pakistan, Hindu, but the way it got reflected at the local level was far uglier. Mm -hmm. Like right on the day of election on mm -hmm. 8th, when it is a silent period and nobody is allowed to you know uh, campaign, you cannot right. even speak to the voters. But at every locality, usually it is like this that suppose you have a polling station here. So people will usually walk 100 meters or 50 meters and go and go for voting. Okay? And everybody knows that there are few ways ki is jage se voter aayega. Hmm. There you could see you know, people standing in bunches wearing the saffron hats and you know, uh, polarizing uh, voters saying Hindu khatre mein hai. Hindu, Hindu ka raj chala jayega, gyara tarik ko kuch nahi hoga, musalman shasan karenge. Tum Hindu really? Ke really? Yeah, tum Hindu ho bhi hai nahi ho, musalmano ko vote doge, ye toh musalman hai, musalmano ki party hai, aam aadmi party. Kuch toh socho, kya karoge, arre, 
अरे दो दो सौ रुपए की बिजली के लिए देश बेच दोगे मतलब एंड आई एम कॉलिंग मुसलमान देर आर लॉट ऑफ वर्ड विच आर यूज फॉर मुसलमान बीजेपी कैडर बीजेपी कैडर एंड हाउ डू नो देवर बीजेपी अरे दे आर देर फ्रॉम माय मोहल्ला दे आर फ्रॉम माय विलेज सेफरन हैट आई मीन नो दे आर फ्रॉम माय विलेज आई नो देयर नेम्स मतलब आई नो देयर नेम्स वी हैव वीडियोस एंड यू नो एंड लेटर यू नो टुवर्ड्स आफ्टरनून देयर इज अ पुलिस बैरिकेड वेयर यू हैव यू हैव सो मेनी पुलिस ऑफिसर्स स्टैंडिंग देयर इज अ एसीपी स्टैंडिंग देयर इज अ एसएचओ स्टैंडिंग एंड राइट ऑन द बैरिकेड वेयर पीपल आर एंटरिंग इनटू द पोलिंग स्टेशन दे आर सेइंग जय श्री राम जय श्री राम एंड वी आर सेइंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ द कॉपलिंग एंड वी टोल्ड पुलिस यू नो कि ये क्या हो रहा है हाउ कैन दे डू दिस एंड पुलिस इज सेइंग सर ये कोई कैंपेन तो नहीं हो रहा ये किसी को वोट देने के लिए तो नहीं बोल रहे एंड देन वी रियलाइज यू नो दिस इज दिस इज पुलिस इज ट्राइंग टू हेल्प देम एंड आवर पीपल यू नो देन वी आल्सो वेंट टू द बैरिकेड एंड वी स्टेड जय बजरंगबली एंड यू नो वी स्टार्टेड शाउटिंग जय बजरंगबली एंड ऑब्वियसली वी आर मोर इन नंबर वी आर मोर इन नंबर फार मोर इन नंबर and then police got nervous ki ye to uh, matlab it is not working this can you imagine politi- politics politics huh? can polarize our gods also huh? <laughs> and you know Ram people, and, 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 and you know what and, and the bjp guy telling our guy are ram bada hai hanuman se acha and our guy saying ki are uh, hanuman ji to leke gaye the kandhe pe utha ke ram aur lakshman ko uh, and this is the kind of <laughs> And we this is happening in Vedic Kerala. So when you so shouted it, then they stopped. They, the police stopped yeah, you. Yeah. Then police stopped both of us. Actually, one of the big <laughs> factors in this election that has come up into question has been the role of the police. What happened Very in much. JNU where they stood <coughs> outside? What happened in Jamia where they entered? What happened in Gargi College where they just watched people climb over the walls and did nothing? You know what? What the happened? Police seems to have come under a lot of scrutiny, and. In, on deficit. the day of polling, we have our polling agents who have to sit from six o'clock in the morning to six o'clock in the evening. You know, mm-hmm. police did not allow us to take food. Okay, they were starving, and they allowed BJP guys to take food. We have video records. Okay, we showed it to the RO. Ki what is he doing? Then the RO said, "I don't know. Police ne kya kiya hoga?" And police said, "Ki RO ne mana kiya ki khana nahi le jana." Today, for the counting, you know, my counting was at Gold Market. I went to gate number two. and it said it is for only ac 43 they said go to gate number 3 i had to walk down to gate number 3 because they were not allowing cars i walked around 800 meters 8 o'clock in the morning because my counting has started i i reached gate number 3 he said iske upar likha hua hai entry only for counting uh, counting agents is pe candidate to nahi likha hua to aapka yahan pe entry nahi hoga aap gate number 2 pe dobara jao <laughs> and i went to gate number 2 then there was a acp sitting maine apna mobile on karke bola ki abhi aapne mereko 2 pe 2 se 3 pe bheja 3 se 2 pe bheja ab main kahan se jaun udke jaun kya andar he said sab iske upar counting agent likha hai iske upar counting agent likha hai i said counting agent jahan jata hai wahi to candidate jata hai but nahi is pe candidate to nahi likha hua to we will not allow you can you imagine this no but are they were they targeting only aap and allowing yes. bjp and yes they are targeting aap so this up. is a very strange this is, this is so really police has you know? done itself a great deal of disservice during this campaign mm-hmm. during this yeah. campaign and well they are so blatantly doing it because well, you know the problem is <coughs> there is no accountability where should i go like if they are not allowing me as a candidate Eight o'clock, the counting has Normally started. Normally, go to the police. It is quarter to nine. Where should I go? You go yeah. to the police. Huh? <laughs> But sort of, I wanted to ask you something about trying to fight and win an election in this mahal, as you were saying. And one of the things that AAP has positioned itself as is a party that is saying to voters in Delhi that you stay with the BJP and vote for us yes. for the Delhi election. Vote for us. Upar AAP jisko karna hai, AAP kariye. Is that how you? I mean, again, give me, a, give us a uh, on ground. How is that? Did you? Is that a message that you also took to your voters, uh, saying, "No, uh, you be with the BJP a, for is, for national. If you want, with Mr. Modi, you can be a you know Modi is, fan. Is, but for K, for Delhi, K. Actually, there is a very strange kind of a duality in the mind of voters, especially in Delhi and probably in other states also, that they believe that Modi is a hero and they believe Kejriwal is a hero. Earlier, we thought that to become to make Kejriwal a hero, we have to make Modi a villain. but it didn't mm-hmm. work similarly bjp also tried in this delhi election look their initial days they were trying to paint kejriwal a villain isne school mein koi kaam nahi kiya ye jhoot bolta hai isne mohalla clinic nahi banaya but it didn't work and they got a message the more you hit kejriwal the bigger kejriwal becomes 
that's why you know they stopped talking about mm. kejriwal and they started getting into polarization but, but you, you try to <coughs> yeah. uh, hit modi and the bigger he became they try to hit kejriwal and the bigger he became, bigger he became. so you stopped very doing that then so that's why we stopped doing it that's a very candid uh, admission yeah that's a very that candid know. admission yeah, yeah. stop doing it if I may, yes there is something to be said about polarization strategies is that they tend to uh, be more effective when they are displayed in in, in you know done by um, stealth or through uh, local subsidiaries and when the main contenders maintain some sort of you know democratic facade and deniability. So the top we may not pass out but one stuck. strong difference between the first Modi term and, 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 and the eight months that we've seen uh, since the last election is that uh, those strategies have come really at the front line <coughs> and it also comes in a context where those attempt at transforming the fabric of society you're basically infusing those issues at the ground were done <coughs> undercover or through subsidiaries now it's big it, it has a open. quite front stage because now it's become part of the government's legislative agenda right and so right. it's uh, it's it, it, it's it's not illogical that those practices also also should occupy center stage you know during uh, during campaigns right and in a way the bjp falls into a in fact, a trap of its own making. Exact suggestions that I have noted down. The one he was saying that instead, you know, that helped m Mr. Uh, Mr. Kejriwal to become a bichara or a victim, a larger than life. Right, right. Because right. and the front leadership <coughs> was attacking him. This that should not have been done. Mm. Secondly, about this, you know, again, mm. the, you know, when the top leadership comes into and directly speaks in a manner, especially in a highly literate state like Delhi, it sometimes backfires. Such mm -hmm. kind of highly emotive issues work, say for example, during Balakot strike or, or you know, where emotions of the people are generally high, yeah. but not in, a, in an isolated elections like that. Right. So that's, that's an important uh, lesson in a sense for yes. the BJP. Pranoy, Rakesh Sinha, yeah. senior uh, <coughs> BJP leader, Rajya Sabha MP joining us. Uh, Rakesh ji, thank you very much indeed. <coughs> Uh, for joining us, I'm sure by now you also had a chance to look at the Delhi result and try to, uh, you know, see what sense you can make of it. If you were to think about something somewhere where the BJP went wrong, I won't try to put words in your mouth whether it was too divisive or not, but what would you identify was your big weakness in this election? No, you know, we, if you, we are analyzing BJP election in the context of binary between AAP and BJP, then we will not reach to the right conclusion. <laughs> I feel that in Delhi, the Delhi's election and Delhi's character should be analyzed in some other plane. Uh, that uh, a larger horizon of the politics, the character of Delhi has changed in the last two and a half decades. And uh, that change not only demographic, generally people say that demographic change has taken place in Delhi, that Bihar, UP and uh, South Indian people are larger number in Delhi and they are influencing the votes. But I think in, in different terms. You know that in Delhi that there is a larger number of the elites, political, social, politic, political, social and cultural elites who have vital role to play in, in political system and social and cultural life. But at the same time, the larger number of the people who, who, whom you can call the plebeians, they are the, they are the poorer people, they are the people who are getting salary of 20,000, 25,000, 30,000. Mm. And they, that transformation is very important transformation in Delhi. And that, that has to be addressed. And I, I, uh, right from the beginning, I, I have, a, uh, 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 I have uh, considered opinion about the Kejriwal that he has emerged as a new socialist in Indian politics. Like he's, he's uh, ca carving and uh, 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 trying to create a base which the socialist lost earlier phase. So he's just, uh, he's giving 200, 300, 400 relief to the people. That relief is very vital for the poor people who are earning 20,000 month, 30,000 month. I remember my days when I was earning uh, 5,000, 6,000 <laughs> and, and the, any relief of 500 was very important for me. Mm. So th this election should not only be c c considered in terms of the two individuals or two ideology, nationalism versus this and, and CA versus NRC versus the NRC's opposition. That is not the final result. That is the uh, key of success of Kejriwal. Second what important thing, what I, I, what I feel in about the... No, no, but I was asking no, I'm, you, I'm no, that was very that. interesting what you that. said. Where do you think <coughs> you went wrong? No, I am telling that. 
here what happened that there is a national leadership of the bjp and the party party works as a family that's why for us from panchayat to parliament election is very important you know for the first time in the history of indian politics you are finding that party president and the prime minister work in the election as a as a common worker the elitism which has been the part of indian political system has been completely obliterated by the party of narendra modi ji and amit shah ji that is one very significant development in the party system in india but as for party bjp is concerned there is a post madanlal khurana and sahab singh barma bjp failed to develop the parallel leadership which could identify with the common masses the masses right. which are the real vote voters now you go to 20 kothis you will find 21 voters you go to 20 unauthorized houses you will we will get 200 voters so it is not they are the object of the object voters are not as a object voters as a stakeholders in the political system the kind of political consciousness is developing in the country the last 10 20 years that is that that, that is resulting in that voters are becoming the stakeholders so any political party or any media house even i am considering nd tv or any other tv channels if you are taking the audience as a taken into granted you are in the delusion so every individual every media house every political party has to come out from that delusion right. and address to the people in some impartial manner and identify make them shareholders stakeholders in your mission yeah. then you can succeed can i just as ask you last last point as far Sorry, bjp is ahead. concerned go ahead the last last time adding the bjp is concerned it has expanded its, its uh, social base is and uh, uh, narendra modi ji's pop popularity is undiminished rather it is increasing there is a appeal of narendra modi ji bjp is uh, nationalism bjp is social and economic policy is appealing to the people for the first time this government under the new liberal uh, world over the, there is a new liberalism but narendra modi ji is implementing the same policy you just see what kejriwal is doing at the local level narendra modi is doing at the national level far larger than the aishman jandhan yojana all these schemes are the for the marginalized and the common people so, that is the reason for the undiminished popularity of narendra modi oh, right can so i just I ask you that if if there is a, yes i just wanted to ask you just looking ahead now because this elections over how will what have you learned from this campaign which you will implement in you've got another six state elections coming up in the next 12 to 14 months what will you not do and what will you uh, change in these in the next elections coming up no bharatiya janata party is a national party uh, a defeat and victory in one state is not a life and death for a party no no but what for will you learn from election, what have you learned <laughs> no look the bjp has internal democracy it is a it is a party with, with a, a very potential leadership and we will sit together we will decide we will discuss the things what what are lacking how how can we overcome we have we have victory in many states we have lost in some states and we know the reasons no, but you're not answering and what also what the reasons why, why name me two things you will change now or you no, think you the, should change that the programs and policy uh, yes i am coming i am coming to that programs and policies of narendra modi government should reach to the common people in in more constructive and more dynamic way the way he, just i am giving one example ibc court in, in insolvency and bankruptcy court that is a very important and vital decision by narendra modi government 3 lakh crore government got from those companies which were lost money and another 3 lakh crore is coming so such a such a strong measures which is cleansing the indian economy that that is not reaching to the common worker common people so i think there are many programs many policies welfare policies and i can say new welfare programs of narendra modi ji government for marginalized people the programs are reaching to the people narrative is not reaching so we have to create narrative i am i make i make difference between modi ji and nehru ji nehru ji has capacity to create a bigger narratives so one patratu one bhilai created the nation that nehru is industrializing the nation and here we the theoretical theoreticians of the party have to create that narrative out of the narendra modi ji vision right, and right. programs right, one sir. important thing pranay ji one thing i i i i would add that yeah. bjp bjp lost and we have welcomed the verdict but it just oppose had there been a opposite verdict bjp would have got 60 seats and aam aadmi party 3 4 7 seats or 10 seats then 
Then there would have been anarchic political activities in Delhi. Shivaji, then you that it was EVM, it was reforms. some conspiracy, <laughs> it was the foreign money. So I think this is also a lesson for all political parties. You have to accept the mandate in a very healthy, constructive manner, right. as BJP has accepted the Delhi's mandate in a healthy and constructive manner. Right. So thank you very, very much. Yes. Thank you. That's a good, positive way to end. Uh, Baj, I'm going to ask you the same question that uh, Yogendra Yadav talked about, and that is this increase in the vote. If you say BJP plus, it's 8%, BJP 5%, whatever. It's, a, it's an increase since 2015, the last election. Is that because of decisiveness? Is it in spite of decisive, uh, divisiveness? What's going to, what are the implications of that? I think it's because of divisiveness. I think if you look at where they've done really well, where they won their seats, it's all in East Delhi, I mean, where they won. Right. And this is an area where, what, 11 of the seats that they have done more than 40% in are Muslim seats with more than 20% Muslim population. The other area that they have done well is in West Delhi. The Central Delhi, which is better educated, they have not done well. And the fact that they have done, got 40% is, you know, it's the only time since 1993 that they've reached this kind of mark. And uh, would, would you say, say they were also contesting against a party which had been, this the third election, there's anti-incumbency, you just won a general election with a huge <coughs> vote in this state. Some honeymoon that uh, Gilles was talking about. So it's very difficult to just isolate it, right? A deep study you will do now. <laughs> oh, there were lots of, I mean, if you look at many of the seats, ARP is one with more than 50, 50 60, 70 percent of the vote. So right. I don't think anti-incumbency worked that strongly right. as the campaign against them. Oh, okay. So right. also the east of Delhi is also more uh, <coughs> minorities and scheduled caste based area, which is, con which is the Congress's base. So as the Congress's base oh, divided shifted, vote, mm -hmm. the shifting of the Congress vote has taken mainly place to up, and that also You're would have led a bit to guilty. By the way, you divided the vote in East Delhi. Not now. But <laughs> by the way, East Delhi is also technically where Shaheen Bag falls. So, right. so and and so when people talk about traffic. And the problem of the blockade, well, and north of trying east. to get from north, from you know, but from Delhi no, but across Vasu, the river. No, that's North East Delhi. That's There's across Yamuna. Delhi. That's not no, but Vasu, the, the seats no, no, around Shaheen Bagh, Aap has won. Bagh is They've won Okla, Tulekabad, I'm not talking about the ones around. I'm talking yeah. across the river. Huge margins. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it did affect the you know Trans Yamuna traffic. Actually, yeah. huh, from that's what I think you're saying. Vasi was a big problem. Trans Yamuna, yeah, but the seats around Shaheen Bagh have all been won by Aap. Just one last I mean, thing before you go, just one, one yes. thing, I just wanted an important no, point that we, uh, most of the exit polls have shown that the BJP support was more in the older voters and much less in the younger voters. It used to be the other way around just five years ago. In fact, it's almost, their pattern is almost like the Congress. How has yes. that changed, that the younger base has well, gone away from the BJP? I think, you know, people are getting educated, but probably not getting employment and I think there has to be a certain amount of frustration. Young people are hurting. And you know, yeah. if they're hurting, mm -hmm. they obviously, you know, and, and whether you like it or not, I think it's as much the state government's response to central government's response. But normally these are few things like finance, employment, people generally attribute to the centre and blame yeah, the centre. Young center. people are hurting. Though it's the state's <laughs> responsibility as well. Self-esteem is falling and there isn't Pakistan to be defeated every day. <laughs> Pranoy, the, the, the fact is that a certain section of students, in my opinion, has moved away and a woman. Voters. Women have moved mm -hmm. away. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Slight. So, th so that, when you that's a very, campus, from the looks of you expect uh, the party lead amongst women was much, much more than the lead amongst so, men. So, so fact, that, like, that look, factor needs to be yeah. discussed. Yeah. Yeah. Very <laughs> good point. Actually, Nikamji, uh, if, if, if young people see images of just anybody walking into a campus and smashing the heads of students in hostels, including women, it does affect a lot of young people. Yeah. No, it does. There's they, no doubt about and it. And they don't see but all the these people is as anti-national. The entire perception, you know, as to why that happened and how, in what circumstances, police went, probably police was unable to answer. They had justification. In fact, no, in the JNU police did not jam, know. No, this is, no, in JNU, the JNU, JNU, in the JNU, JNU, JNU police did not and vice know. chancellors did come out and say there were thousands of people much beyond the capacity uh, of the university, they were inside. 
So, and they, they, they come no, to in Jamia. In, in, but in JNU, other so, people so went so in. The perception is something else. Facts may be something else. Right. And by the way, there's still no arrest no, in not, JNU. We are not really in discussing the very partisan conduct of the police. Police in Delhi, unlike in other states, comes directly under the Home Ministry, which is Amit Shah. So Amit Shah was not only micromanaging and executing the campaign, but under his instructions, the police went all out, as he mentioned, yeah, uh, yeah. an AAP so candidate, it was very supporting... No, I think suppo the, the no, let's biggest see, you uh, know, trust deficit has happened with month, the police of it's Delhi. It's one month since the violent attack on JNU and no arrests have been made. I mean, what, if, what, does it, what does it say? Even now, if the Delhi police wants to redeem its reputation, at least go and catch those people who were caught on camera. Okay, Sharjil uh, Ahmed, he delivered his speech. He was a wanted man. <coughs> you hunted him down deep in Bihar. He was a wanted man. But these are wanted people who bashed up students inside a university. Speech. They've been caught on camera. It's been, it's it's been nearly 45 no days. Problem. And it, there doesn't even seem to be any effort to catch anyone. <coughs> that is actually this a is shocking... This is Raat, Raat Gai or Bhat Gai. You know, you uh, young people are watching this. I just want to say that as you're saying, as Shekhar is saying, that if the police wants to redeem itself, it should at least even now, at this very late hour, Try to tell us that this, these were the JNU accused, and this is what we are doing uh, under the law. Well, now, I would say, I, I would say, notices have been issued. You know, all, all. I, I, can I, can I, I just give you some clarity on that? Let me just uh, tell you, give you a little bit of clarity on that because we've been trying to follow the story, <coughs> and the police have said to our reporters in so many words that we are not going to make any arrests. We are going to straight file a charge sheet indicating that there is pressure from above that do not make arrests because there are ABVP people involved. So how no, but there are so left people also involved. No, this is the shoot. They are but not because, anybody. No, no, but because the, 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 of because the, but the absence both. of arrests, yes, there are both sides involved. But the reason why no arrests are happening is because of the fact that there are ABVP people involved. That's the that's what they are claiming. So how does As it make sense? No, no, I just want to complete that. I just want to complete that. So today, if BJP wishes to get even a higher vote share it's got seven to eight percent high which is a good bump but if it wants to get higher and why not it should be thinking about it today so that it can tr uh, translate into seats today there is no accountability i rakesh sinha who's a friend of everybody rakesh sinha and who's a thinker he is also talking about the local bjp so what i find during the day uh, pranay sitting here is that it is uh, they, it's now coming down to the local BJP. I had thought the Prime Minister would take some blame, the uh, Amit Shah would take some blame, uh, then at the, the other very, very low level, Mr. Nadda, and I think that the acts will fall on Manoj Tiwari because that's mm. the local BJP. Now, that doesn't build my trust. I Don't feel build trust. If, if mm. my I didn't realize actually uh, uh, Yogendra is still with us. Thank you very mm. much for staying on Yogendra. Last words with you on the impact of this election and how important it is uh, or how unimportant was it? <laughs> uh, first, uh, can I just add one thing about JNU? Uh, yes. Just to mention the fact that I had actually, I was since I was marginally involved in that incident. We saw you yes. there. I had yeah. filed a rep uh, they haven't you know, report with the police. They haven't caught him yet. Not Identified. arrested yet. Not arrested. <laughs> he got rough and up. not arrested me as yet but i actually uh, filed a full report with the police identifying those persons giving their facebook accounts and everything and police didn't even call me to confirm my version not even a phone call from police so far that's that it but shocking. the largest thing I, the one point i wanted to make the, 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 the larger point I wanted to make is this, that look, today is election day, we are discussing elections, so yes, Delhi has happened, there is something to introspect for the BJP, though may, they may not admit it on camera. But to my mind, Dr. Roy, the real game today is outside elections. Elections are no longer the center of politics right now, because <laughs> what we face is a threat to the very republic itself. What we are witnessing is an attempt to dismantle the republic. And the real resistance is not coming from electoral politics. The real resistance will come from outside electoral politics, from Shine Bark, from CA protesters, from, the, from, the from 
from the young people of this country, especially women. And from, from the young people, yes. And women, that's right. So that's so. really the happening side of politics. Yeah, I don't agree with uh, that. And that's where we should keep our <laughs> Certainly attention. Not. On what days did you other find in your actual campaign, no, no, young no, people just, and their active, uh, how involved were they? Uh, frankly, uh, young, I couldn't uh, find many young people. Usually, you know, young people always come and do our campaigns. Okay, but so you're yes, pretty young, yeah. Yes, <laughs> I am pretty young. Uh, <laughs> but yes, you can see the trend in women. Women. Even in villages, uh, urban villages, even in small colonies, coming. even in bigger colonies like GK1, they love Aam Aadmi Party. Mm. There is something, they, they get emotional when they talk about Aam Aadmi Party. And I think all this violence and, you know, hatred, women mm. generally don't like all this. You know, they are more sensitive. And they must they react even more to the police. To the they they react distance. even more yeah. to the, uh, yes. the trust deficit of the police. Yes, yes. And, and we're not talking about all policemen. There's still some very good independent very policemen. Few. But the Brian yes. love, uh, is getting fewer and fewer. Yeah. Yes. So uh, that traction, you can see that in women. Women, that's yes, interesting. So is there, if there's one thing before and, we wrap, and, and second thing, thing about the older wrap, voter, you know, uh, older voter, there is a reason for this. You know, the core voter vote base of BJP in Delhi is primarily those uh, Punjabis who had migrated from Pakistan during partition. They have very bad memories of that partition and they are full of hatred, most of them, against Muslims and Pakistan, okay? And so, you know, they are that generation. They have been able to pass on some of that hatred to the next generation and smaller hatred to the third generation. So that hatred is coming down. That's why you see. But is there, okay. you're talking about young women, young people, are they influencing their parents and the older generation also? Uh, they try to influence, but I, I don't think, you know, they can influence them much. I they have, have read have one lady yeah. locked up a yeah. father. father because yes, yeah. I, I, he was going to vote for BJP. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's true or not. No, 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 just, just 10 seconds. seconds. <laughs> just give me, uh, Vasu, 10 seconds in yes, order yes, to yes, reply yes. to oh, please, Mr. Yogi and Yadav. If I take Delhi's opinion, uh, or uh, uh, various opinions, on CN and RC, they are not disputing. They are, they are saying they are with CA and RC. But still on local issues, they are voting for RAP. Right. So that distinction, Delhi, if taken as an example, is maintaining and that's a, that's an all India trend. Please remember that. Okay, last right. word, Saurabh Bharadwaj, we're getting into now AAP 3.0. What is your number one big step that you're going to take this time? I want it should be pollution. 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 Very important. Excellent. What a, and how much we spoke about it tonight, pollution. We really right. discussed <laughs> it. <laughs> well, it such a key aspect. <laughs> next, next, <laughs> next, next, hour, next hour is about pollution. Not just pollution. environmental <laughs> pollution, but also social, cultural because, pollution. Because yeah, you cough. That's a good way to put it. It's allergy. It's affecting allergy. you. Mm. He's, he's actually you're coughing right now. Yeah. So. Just like Keshubhaj used to. Okay. <laughs> he got right. Thank you all very much indeed. Thank you. Thank everybody. And uh, it's been a fascinating election. And uh, what was the thing you said? Jadu has, Jadu has swept. <laughs> I thought election. you'd be too embarrassed to repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping this will get you to sing as we wrap no, up. And, 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 the yeah. GDP, and the GDP of West Bengal. <laughs> that was <laughs> 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 Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye for now.